April 8th is the date designated for the observance of Siddhartha Gautama's birth and the person who became Shakyamuni Buddha in Japan. The celebration there has merged with a native Shinto ceremony into Hanamatsuri or flower festival. And Japan celebrates this national holiday with parades, parties, public gatherings, and child-centric events. And as the holiday is deeply connected to Japanese culture, the celebration will pay homage to the past and include a variety of costumes, music, dances, and plays, all connected to the past and bringing history to life. In the South and Southeast Asia, the festival of Vesak combines Shakyamuni Buddha's birth, awakening, and death on different days of the relevant lunar calendars. In Hong Kong, Macau, and South Korea, it's a national holiday. In North America, the date is celebrated on different days as Vesak or Shakyamuni Buddha's birthday, depending upon the Buddhist denomination and ethnic group. Gautama Buddha was born sometime in the 6th to 4th century BCE in Lumbini, in what is now Nepal, and raised in the Shakya capital of Kapilavastu. The date of his birth and death are debated among scholars. Traditionally, previous to the modern era, Chinese, Korean, and Vietnamese Buddhists dated his life to the 10th century BCE. Today, it's viewed that sometime in the 5th century BCE he is probably a pretty good guess for his birthday. Interestingly enough, archaeologists claim to have found the actual site of his birth, though the date, even century, is still unknown. We may be short on facts about the dating of his birth, but the legends that surround his birth abound. And that is true in both the Pali and the Mahayana canon. In the past, we've had a discussion on some of these legends, a little bit about the meaning of his birth and its significance. During the service, each person pours amacha or sweet tea on the statue of the baby Buddha surrounded by colorful flowers as an observance. This year, year, obviously, we're not able to do that. A different point that I would like to make this evening in this year's Hanamatsuri is one that is noted by Lopez, that although there's a great, there is a great interest in the West in the biography of Shakyamuni Buddha, the early traditions seemed intent on demonstrating his similarity to the Buddhas of the past rather than his uniqueness. Why is this? According to Lopez, he suggests that such a concern was motivated in part by the need to demonstrate that what the Buddha taught was not the innovation of an individual, but rather the rediscovery of a timeless truth. Let me repeat that that early Buddhists were more concerned about the Buddhas of the past and the similarity of Shakyamuni Buddha because it demonstrated not the innovation of the individual, but the rediscovery of timeless truths, what the Buddha himself called an ancient path. That has been discovered in precisely the same way since time immemorial by a person who undertook the same type of extended preparation. It is in this sense that the doctrine of existence of past Buddhas allowed the early Buddhist community to claim an authority similar to that of the Vedas of their Hindu rivals and the Jain tradition. So today we have something of a paradox. We're observing the birth of Siddhartha Gautama who became Shakyamuni Buddha at the time of his awakening under the Bodhi tree in Gaia, India. And during this observance, I'm asserting the significance of the individual is not as great as the teaching in and of itself. That paradox itself is something of a reflection. How many times have I heard someone ask me, well, what did the Buddha really say? And you'll know my retort, which is we don't really know what he said, we know what is reported to have of his having been said. And furthermore, that this is placing prominence upon one person as opposed to the teachings as a whole. Humans like to have an individual to worship or exemplify, but we don't worship Shakyamuni Buddha, the awakened person of the Shakya clan, 
and we realize that exemplifying him while worthwhile may not be possible. That is why on the observance of his birthday, I requested the people reflect on how has the re awakening that resides within us, the Buddha, the teachings, the very being of existence, the Dharma, and the assembly of those who follow the path, Shasana, contributed to their lives in the last year in the time to come. The teachings are not of one person. We attribute them to this person, but they are timeless truths with a small t that can, if we embody them, ease our suffering in the samsaric realm and provide meaning and purpose to this existence. This is what is important to observe on Hanamatsura, Shakyamuni Buddha's birthday. And with this, I say, happy birthday, Shakyamuni Buddha, and all the Buddhas of the past, present, and future. Svaha. This is the practice of the threefold truth. And this is from the Kujo Shakujo. Now I wish for sentient beings that practice the perfect truth, great friendship and great compassion. I wish for all sentient beings that practice the mundane truth, great friendship and great compassion. I wish for the sake of all sentient beings that practice the one vehicle, great friendship and great compassion. I wish for the sake of all sentient beings to respect and honor the Buddha treasure, Dharma treasure, and Sangha treasure, the three treasures in one body.